What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. This is episode two of Ozark season four, part one. Now, what did we see in the first episode? Wendy and Marty have an impossible task in front of them. This is to clean up the image of Navario to make it look like he's an upstanding citizen, even though he was formerly connected with the cartel and able to move freely between the United States and Mexico. Also, we've seen our boy Jonah. He has chosen size to go work with Ruth and launder money against his parents' will. Now, before we jump into this episode, shout out to the notification gang. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of it, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. Now, we also have Mel walking around and trying to figure out what Helen is doing. But on top of that, Javier killed the sheriff. So we're going to see how all this turns out in episode two of Ozarks. We start the episode off with Ruth and she's looking around, but she stumbles across this goat and it looks like it's a cookie jar. Now, the lady selling it to her says her husband didn't think goats and cookies would go together because they're satanic goats, but Ruth buys this. So this goat is gonna be something we need to see what exactly is gonna do for Ruth. Ruth puts Ben's ashes inside of this cookie jar. Now, she sits here and she starts crying because it's reminding her of how much she loved Ben. If you remember, Jonah is the one that brought the ashes over in the first episode. And this is where the connection between Jonah and Ruth began because they both love Ben. The four signs we need to look for in episode two is a rosary, cleaning supplies, chemical structure, and computer equipment. While Marty is driving, there's a billboard that says Mission Sheriff John Nix. Info call Camden County Sheriff 1 800 555 0199. Now, with all of this going on, Marty knows there's about to be a lot of attention down here in the Ozarks. Marty shows up to Agent Miller's house. Now, he's been calling and calling and calling because he has this task from Omar Navarro to get him out of this and make him a model citizen. Now, she's saying, All right, he wants to cooperate. What is he willing to give up? And Marty's like, well, he wants to be able to move freely between the United States and Mexico. Miller's saying, I'm not going to my boss and he doesn't want to do any jail time or anything. The only way that this will work is if we give up big players. It's going to have to be just like how we got one cartel. It's going to have to be other big arrests like that in order to grant him the clemency to be able to travel freely like that. Now, Marty says, let me go back and talk to him. But he's serious. Wendy's in the kitchen and she's looking over a few things, but when she looks up, she notices that the box that had Ben's ashes in them, they're gone. She calls Charlotte in there. She's like, Where, where's the box at? Charlotte, like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jonah took it. Well, when she gets down there, Jonah's playing on a computer and he's like, I gave it to Ruth. She'll take good care of it. And Wendy can't even say anything because she is the one that got her brother killed. And she knows how Jonah feels about this whole situation. And Jonah, he don't give a damn. Wendy goes straight to Ruth's house and you hear her yelling, Ruth, get out here right now. And Ruth is in there. She's eating some cereal and she's talking to Ben's ashes. Your sister, she's a wheeze. But what does Ruth do? She comes out with a shotgun. She cocks that thing. Wendy, Ruth ain't playing around. We ain't on the same side anymore. Ruth told Wendy, I'm going to take good care of these ashes. Unless Jonah wants them back, then I'm not going to give them back. Now, Wendy is saying, you were just next in line. He didn't love you. He was just very sick. And what does Ruth say? She said, yeah, he may have left me in a month, but we don't know because you killed him first. Now, Wendy, this is on you. I know you were protecting the family, but you did get being killed. Omar is in here confessing to his sins. Now, he has sinned three times. He also kicked the lady's dog. Now, what the priest is telling him, you're good from these sins. He does get a phone call in the middle of this. And the priest asks, do you have any more confessions, any more sins that you need to confess to? And he says, no. But what we're seeing is he's really trying to remove himself from the game. Now, he's going to the good Lord to try to get this help. But I don't know, Navarro, your nephew, Javier, it don't look like he's playing around. Marty calls Navarro back. Now, Navarro, he's saying, where are we at? What's the progress? Now, we know Marty, he talked with Maya, but Maya doesn't run anything in the FBI. She can cut a deal, but she's saying he's going to have to do some kind of prison time. Marty has told Navarro that he has Maya Miller in his pocket, per se. So he's saying, make it work because I'm not doing no jail time. There's no list. And I actually want to meet Agent Miller. And Marty's like, damn. 
Now he's going to really have to try to convince Miller, hey, I need your help with this. This could be another big case for you. Now, our first sign was the rosary, and it was Navarro in there confessing to his sins. Now, Javier comes up, and he's asking him, is that Hillbilly talking about Darlene? Is she in line? Navarro punches the hell out of him and puts his hand behind his neck. Bro, nephew, you killed a sheriff. If that blood comes back, the FBI will be down on us. The army will do exactly like they did to our rivals and all of our blood will be on your soft hands. So Navarro, he understands what's going on. Yeah, you're trying to make a power play and take me out of my spot. But if all of this goes down, no one's going to be loyal to you, Javi, because you messed up all of this and all of this blood will be on your hands. And you don't have that many years of experience. You haven't protected any of us for anything. So Navarro, he's getting very upset. He's trying to remove himself from the game, but he still has to deal with his nephew. Darlene comes up to Kansas City to talk to the mob, Frank Sr. Now, he's saying, I don't want to get mixed up in anything you got going on, Darlene, so I'm not going to distribute any of your heroin for you because the cartel killed the sheriff. And I'm not getting into it with the cartel again because they killed a lot of our men. So Frank, he already knows cartel. Oh, that's way bigger than the mob. Darlene is upset because without him, they can't move anything. And we just got the software that we can launder money through the hotel. So right now, Darlene's plans, they aren't falling through. Frank Jr. runs in here. Well, should I say limps in here? You remember Darlene shot him in the leg. He comes in. He's telling his dad, look, if I work with her, you got to work with her. But that's because Frank Jr. is an asshole. Frank Sr., he said, oh, no, we're not getting involved with that. Nope. The cartel and there's a dead sheriff. Mm -mm. That's bad for business. They bring Mel in, you know, the investigator looking for Helen, the one that got the security footage of Jonah in there with a shotgun. Yeah, they bring him in because he left a card and on the back it said, do your job. Now, Sheriff Nix is missing and he was one of the last people in communication with him. But what he's saying is and he's hinting that, hey, these beachfront properties, they have security footage. Maybe you're sitting on something that you don't know because he already been in Helen's house. So he's saying, don't you think it's kind of weird? You know, it's no coincidence that Helen comes up missing and then Nix comes up missing. So he's probably gonna go back over to the house and go look at the security footage again. But Darlene comes in the room also. We know Darlene and the snails, they had a good connection with the sheriff here. Well, with Nix gone, there's a stand-in sheriff. And she's not hinting that the sheriff is dead. She's just saying while he's away. But she also doesn't make light of Sheriff Nix. He never got anything done. He wasn't a doer. He would have all kinds of information, data in front of him, and he wouldn't do anything about it. Now, you can see that Darlene is trying to um, bribe a little bit to the new sheriff, but she's shutting it down. She's not like Sheriff Nix. She says, you can try that bribery with somebody else in the next election, but don't do that here because I'll bring you up on charges. You all remember Sam, you know, the bird's pond, the one that lived with his mom and she was kind of running his life. And then they brought him into the casino and had him lose a lot of money. So it seemed like they were generating a lot. Well, he has a gambling problem now. He's like, oh, I know you guys aren't reimbursing me. Uh, I got the whole system figured out here. No, 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 no. Wendy tells him to get out of here and bans him from the casino. One, because he knows a little bit too much. And two, he's just losing all of his money. Wendy has a meeting with Jim. Now, Jim is the guy that handles the political side. If you need something done, you can go to Jim. He knows the people and he'll plug you in. Now, what Wendy is expecting to get from him is how can she set up all of the votes, all of the elections to run through them, meaning that they will have control over who gets elected and pretty much have their hand in the pocket. Now, he starts naming off states. You could do this. Missouri, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio. These are the states that you want to have on your foundation as political backings. Now, one of the guys in Illinois, Wendy used to know. Now, he doesn't like Wendy, so this is going to be very tough for her. Jim then proceeds to tell her in order to get this done, you would need at least one hundred and fifty million dollars to get all these people on you. And this will be done in a couple years. But Wendy and Marty, they want it done by this year. Well, there are elections coming up in about a month in Missouri. So Jim is saying, if you get that 150 million like ASAP, oh, you can pretty much buy off anybody you want. If you can get that money. Then she asked Jim, will I be able to get you? He says, I'm ahead to my next appointment. 
Because one thing about Jim is he may accept some things, but he's not going to accept it to the fact that he could get caught with it and lose his position. Darlene is upset. When she pulls up to the motel, she's, Jonah, what did your parents do with Sheriff Nix? Because she knows in this town, the only people with the capability of doing something like that are the birds or the cartel. Now, this is all bad. So she tells Jonah, if you know anything, let me know. Jonah seen it in the woods. Now, we can't confirm if he knew exactly what was going on, but he's seen something in the woods and there was a police vehicle at the house. But she tells him to get on out of here. The whole time, investigator Mel, he's listening, he's looking. Okay, what they got going on over here? Because he's doing his job. This man said, I'm on the clock until I get a signature and what I'm looking for. He hasn't stopped working from the day we seen him. Now, Darlene is telling Ruth, hey, the cartel got rid of Nick's. And unless we can figure out what's going on, the mob, they're not going to distribute anything for us. So this motel was really a $450,000 waste because we can't launder any money if we don't have any product moving. Marty goes to talk to Agent Miller because he really needs to get the ball rolling. We just got off the phone with Navarro earlier and he wants to meet with her. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now, of course, she is very, very scared about this. She's an FBI agent. He's a cartel boss. She just had a baby. She has a family. So, of course, you don't want to go on this meeting one-on-one -on -one with this guy. Yeah, Marty will be there with you. But the cartel don't care about Marty. The cartel don't care about anyone but the cartel. Now, Marty said, look, there's going to be a 30-minute window. They'll send you a car and pick you up. But Maya is saying, I don't want to go on this by myself, and I don't want the cartel to have my address. So he proposes a plan that her and the baby come and stay with them. Charlotte will watch the kid. And then they can go on the meeting. Now she's sitting here and she's thinking about it. Yeah. Me personally, I'd be like, man, the hell with that, Marty. Even though Marty does have a little bit of dirt because, you know, she's in his. <laughs> These two. I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Let me know if you guys would go with the cartel on this. It is a potential big promotion, though. Sign number two, chemical elements. This lady's name is Claire, and she took over a pharmaceutical company from her brother who blamed the opioid epidemic on the drug users. Now, they're trying to get this influence because she has a lot of money and they got to come up with one hundred and fifty million dollars. They're trying to get this influence to be a part of them. So Claire is a significant part in trying to get this money. Sign number three, computer equipment. Jonah just got a delivery of all new computer software, computer equipment, because he's building a new system to launder money for roof. Now he chose his side. You hear Wendy saying, oh no, you're not doing that. But he told his dad, I built my own software. I'm not using yours, but this is what I'm gonna be doing. Wash your money for roof and the snails. Marty hears this, but he knows what's going on here. You can't make a big scene like Wendy is doing. He knows that the seriousness is getting this done for the cartel. So he goes in and tells Charlotte, do not talk to Jonah anymore about the business. You don't want to give Jonah any information that he can potentially use for Ruth or against them. Because Jonah right now, he's not too stable. But Wendy's making a big deal about it. I told you, Marty is all business. He's the mind behind all of this. At the Snell's residence, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do because everyone that used to work with Darlene, they're selling meth on the boats, on the water. You remember they used to go to the church, pass out Bibles, and on the inside, it'd be some of that good. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, they don't have any of that. Ruth says she has a list of high rollers from the casino, and one of them, he does everything, blow, girls, everything. Now, Darlene hears this and says, one high roller isn't enough for what we're trying to move. But Ruth is saying this is somewhere we can start. And, you know, after that, we can continue to build and upgrade our product. Her and Wyatt, they start talking about, yeah, we can have homegrown heroin. We got the high fashion drugs. The whole time, Darlene is hearing this and she's getting frustrated because these kids, they aren't taking it serious like she is. Wendy goes to meet with Cheryl, who's the CEO of the pharmaceutical company. Now, she's pitching the idea where they're stopping corruption. They're doing all kinds of things within the community. And also, they're trying to build rehabilitation centers. Now, the lady, Cheryl, she's hearing it. She's like, OK, one hundred and fifty million dollars. Now, what Wendy does is she says, my brother, he was bipolar. So if we can make these things happen, that would be near and dear to my heart because of a family member. 
Now she says her brother is missing. So Cheryl says, oh, I understand that. But $150 million at this point, we can't do that, especially after lawsuits and all these different type of events been happening. Marty goes to talk to Ruth about Jonah working for Ruth. Why the hell are you recruiting my son? She's like, Marty, you're not getting the ashes. He said, I'm not worried about those ashes. That's between you, Wendy and Jonah. I'm talking about my son. Why are you recruiting my son to work for you while he's grieving? And she's saying he's, I didn't recruit him and he's not working. He's not laundering any money. He's just doing some math for me. Now, Marty is saying, look, I could have set up those accounts for you, but we know that wouldn't have happened. Wendy was not going to allow that to go down. And he's asking, why are you trusting Darlene when she shot a man's dick off? We talking about Frank Jr. And Ruth looks at him like, you're not any better than us. Marty, you're doing the same thing. What are you going to do? Get your shot off too? So Ruth, she's about her business, but she's upset because she spent 450000 on this motel. Ruth goes up to Chicago to talk to Carrie. Now, Carrie is a chef. He owns a restaurant, but he goes down to the Ozark High Roller. He loses a lot at the tables. Now, what Ruth is doing is proposing that he talks up. He's more of an influencer. He won't be a dealer, but talks up how good this heroin is. And what she's doing is selling the product to him, saying it's grown on the best farm you ever seen. This is the purest stuff. You don't have to smoke it. You can snort it. Well, one thing you know about the drug game, Carrie, he's like, okay, I'm going to try it. But first, you have to try it. And you can't turn down your own product because if you don't do it, then how do I know you're not a cop? You need to do it, Ruth. It's impolite to let this man do it on his own. Ruth, she takes a big hit of it. Now, mind you, it's just a little pinch, just a little bump on the end of a knife. And she talk about, yeah, you did that a little too hard. Just a little. Now, I don't know how they do it, but I'm just saying when I see it on TV, that's all they do is a little. She talk about. Now, look at her. See how he did his? His was just a quick. Hers was. Damn, Ruth, what are you trying to do? Start the knife? Carrie agrees that he'll talk about the dope to other members. Now, he says he wants to go see the farm. That's because he said he wants to get his hands in the dirt. This is also just in case he knows if he ever has to snitch on anything. I know where a big dope farm is. You ain't tricking nobody, Carrie, because he don't want to lose that restaurant. Maya shows up to the house, but Wendy and Marty, they have to go to the casino because they got about 40 minutes to try to get this deal seal we know claire she declined it now they're headed out when maya gets here she's going to be staying in jonah's room but she's looking around because she knows what the birds are involved in and she's still a little iffy because she has her newborn there with her carrie comes down to look at the farms he got his hands in the dirt literally he put his hands in the dirt ah this dirt smells good now he wants to see the actual poppy seeds. Let's stop all the small talk. Ruth is saying yes, Darlene is saying no. You remember at the table when she was listening to Ruth and why they were talking about it, joking around? She's serious about this business. And she tells Carrie, it's best you leave because he starts talking about soybeans, asparagus, and all this extra stuff. This isn't a hippie farm. Darlene is in the business of heroin. And she says that Ruth isn't authorized to make those decisions deal is over with get out of here ruth is cousin at darlene she talking about why it talked to her he said me what am i talking to her about it's her farm we got to respect it but that's because he's getting the lifestyle i get to just chill relax I got me a sugar mama you know saying we got some bread hey, what, what do you want me to say hey darling you should listen to ruth no oh okay hey ruth she's not gonna listen to us and the last thing why it says and she's my girlfriend you hear him in the back talking about, wait, those two were dating? I told y'all it was disgusting when we seen them in bed. I told y'all last season when they were, uh -huh. oh my gosh. Marty and Wendy, they're pitching to Claire. How are you gonna keep operating this business? Just because you buy another pharmaceutical company and raise the price of their best selling drug, that's not gonna be sustainable. Now Marty, he has documents that are showing the numbers of Claire's pharmaceutical company. Now, these are private documents, but there's always a way to access them. And they're telling her, look, we want to know a specific thing. What is the cost of your raw materials? What are you doing with that? Because we see that you're, you're doing a little bad in the opioid spot. Just like we're hearing now with the big pharma greed. Well, what they're presenting to her is an opportunity to get the raw materials or opioids for 65% 
cheaper than what they're getting from Afghanistan. Now, I know you're thinking exactly like I'm thinking. Darlene just shut down an opportunity with a guy in Chicago. Now, they're telling her, we won't talk about this anymore because it's illegal. But she wants to hear it because this will save her $300 million. Now, if she accepts this proposition that Marty and Wendy are bringing, they will want $150 million donated to them. To assure that none of this will come back to her, she mentions, you guys were idling. Is this what it was for? And Wendy said, yeah, we were idling for heroin. We were idling for money. We were idling for all of that. And the FBI found nothing. So you could take this deal and you can make $300 million. And she accepts it. Wendy calls Jim and tells him, hey, that election, that 150, make it happen. Get all the politicians that we need and let's make it happen because we got it. Now, she's not telling them that they're doing illegal heroin to give to the Shaw Pharmaceutical Company. All she's saying is we're going to put their name on a lot of rehabilitation centers that we're creating. Javier shows back up, but Marty told him already, stop showing up here. The FBI, they've been around the casino and we know Javi, he don't care. Hey, I didn't go inside, but I need you to roll with me. The last sign was the cleaning supplies and Marty's at the house cleaning up where Sheriff Nix got shot. Now, Javi could have easily done this. And this could have been done hours ago, but he ain't about to do it. Marty, come and clean this up. Marty's in the house with Javi. His boss calls Omar Navario. Now, you know, Omar and Javi, these two are at it because one wants to take another one's spot, but one's in power control right now. Now, Javi pulls his gun out and tells, hey, Marty, you still need to get to work. But he's also listening closely because he knows that he's working directly with Omar. Now, without saying that they're working with the snails, he's telling Omar, look, I made a deal with a pharmaceutical company to get some raw materials. It works out. But Omar wants to know, OK, that works. Is it going to be protecting me? What's going on here, Marty? But he can't speak too much because Javi is there and he doesn't want him dealing with the snails. Jonah's outside flying this drone. Now you remember him and his uncle Ben, they had a drone and they seen a drug deal go down and it was a little bit crazy. But Wendy comes out and telling them, you're on the wrong side. We just got a huge donation to the foundation. You need to think about what you're doing. And what does Jonah say? What did you do with the sheriff's body? Did you burn it like you did everything else? Now that Darlene told him that his family had something to do with it, he's questioning his mom's every move. They're doing all this talking like Agent Miller isn't in the house just watching everything that they do. So now she's looking, hmm, what's the disconnect between Wendy and her son Jonah? The sheriff comes over and they got to hide Javi. Marty opens up the door and saying, oh, yeah, I'm her business partner. She gave me a spare key. I haven't seen her in a couple weeks because they're looking for Helen. I haven't seen her in a couple weeks and uh, I know she's going through a divorce. Now, the sheriff, she's doing what they're supposed to. She's looking around. You guys are cleaning. He's like, oh, yeah, we just paid the deposit. So they're doing whatever. But she wants to know about the security system and if there is one in the house. We already seen Javi pop one sheriff. He comes out the room like, man, I'm gonna go get her. Marty's like, man, if you don't get back there, I already cleaned the security system. And the reason he did this is because Mel came over and he gave him the screenshot of Jonah being there. So Marty was smart enough to go down there and delete everything that's off of him. Now the sheriff is asking questions. I'm like, all right, well, Helen isn't here. Thank you for showing up. She's asking, are, are you all right? He's saying, I'm worried, but I just thought she went back to Chicago. Now, the sheriff is saying you shouldn't have cleaned up because if she is a missing person, then we could use this evidence. I would have said, well, I don't know if she's a missing person or not, but thanks for coming over. You can go ahead and leave now because I'm about to leave. They're just having a nice family dinner. We got a sheriff missing. You got your son laundering money for the, the snails and Ruth. And he's in here asking an FBI agent that did an audit on your family's casino who's just eating dinner with her son here. Hey, uh, Agent Miller, what is the, the most common way that money launchers get get arrested? But then Maya, she's still an FBI agent. She sees somebody walking in the backyard. She pulls that thing out. Of course, it's investigator mail just walking around the house because the doorbell doesn't work. We'll knock on the door. Marty says, I got it. Miller goes back in the house. Now he's saying um, the footage at Helen's house on the security cam is all scrubbed. Marty says, well, maybe you messed it up when you broke in there illegally. 
He said, but the sheriff said you were over there cleaning up. So why would a CEO such as yourself not just hire a cleaning crew? So Marty says, if you trespass over here again, it's going to be a problem. He's digging and Marty is just avoiding everything as he should. But then he brings up, hmm, you know what happened to Helen. Is it something that has to do with your wife's brother Ben? Marty flips him off and goes back in the house. Marty gets the call from the Barrios people. They got 30 minutes before a vehicle comes. Now he goes down to Miller's room and he knocks on the door. She's already getting dressed and she's saying, I can't do this, Marty. Well, Ben, what? I just told you that Navario's nephew's here and you talking about you can't do this? You gotta do this. Marty's like, give me a couple days. I'm gonna get it right. He said, 10 minutes. Navario ain't playing. This is about business. Maya, as an FBI agent, she should know how serious this is. You can't just back out of this with the cartel. This not only puts the birds at jeopardy, it puts you and your son at jeopardy. And that's what Wendy is telling her. Hey, if you won't protect my family, then it's going to be no hoes bar with whatever Navarro wants to do to you and your son, Wilson. When they get outside, they look at Marty. Nope, we just want Agent Miller. There you go. Episode two of the Ozarks. Let me know what you think about this opioid deal. Do you think that Darlene is going to cooperate with Marty? And also, is Agent Miller going to be able to handle this meeting one on one? Let me know what you guys think. I'm ODIJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.